we have Nathaniel Burton from the NSA. Let's hear what they're working on. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Nate Burton here from the NSA, and I'm going to talk to you a bit today about what we're doing with OpenStack. I wanted to start by saying thank you. Uh, basically, if the, the only thing I did today uh, that I said that you took home out of this was that the uh, community is doing an amazing job um, with what they've created. Uh, thank you to uh, Rackspace and NASA uh, for uh, starting OpenStack, making it open source, uh, sharing it with the community, um, building a, uh, a system that uh, kind of fostered development and uh, creating a thriving community around uh, uh, OpenStack. And, uh, Making, making it pluggable in a way that uh, you could still have a thriving ecosystem of uh, vendors, open source companies, startups around it, uh, creating innovation and specialization in specific areas. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a bit today about um, the NSA, uh, some of our IT challenges, and how we uh, have leveraged OpenStack to build a private cloud. Uh, however, given the, given the nature of our work, there's a few there's a few things that I can't talk to you about. Um, so the number of users, uh, the number of systems we have running OpenStack, <laughs> the number of servers we have in our OpenStack clusters, the amount of storage capacity we have, the various applications we're actually using our OpenStack system for, and I'm pretty sure I can't tell you that. <laughs> so. Uh, I work at the NSA. Uh, I've worked there for about 10 years. We're located in Fort Meade, Maryland. Uh, we are part of the intelligence community. Uh, there are 16 uh, agencies and organizations all under the management of the ODNI. and um, The NSA in particular does signals intelligence and information assurance, protecting and securing uh, US government systems. Uh, we have a large workforce made up of civilians, uh, military folk, and uh, government contractors. Um, and uh, one thing that's unique about NSA is that we have a very large um, technical civilian population. Uh, so rather than lots of things being uh, 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 run uh, by various contracts and things, we actually have a lot of hands-on technical folks doing development, doing research. Um, and in particular, we've got lots of people doing uh, uh, innovation in computer science, mathematics, cryptanalysis. Uh, we're, we're actually the, one of the largest employers of uh, linguists for doing foreign language analysis, as you might be able to uh, figure out. Um, we, we use pretty much all the technology out there. Um, uh, we, we use a mix of commercial, open source, in-house developed software. If there's uh, any particular type of hardware, software applications, development languages, we've probably got it in various pockets uh, in, our, uh, in our environment. Um, and every time we go to uh, build a system or try to solve a particular problem, we look at existing commercial products out there to see if there's anything we can use, open source, um, and then pick uh, the best thing to solve the problem, because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, so cloud. Uh, the, we got a good uh, talk from uh, the physicist uh, before me, Randall, uh, about uh, some of the cloud stuff that they're doing and uh, from uh, uh, that point of view. But uh, in, in media, like, cloud's been this buzzword that's been blown out to uh, be, be everything, right? It solves everybody's problems. It's a panacea. Um, uh, and you've got like uh, all the as a service type thing, software as a service, platform as a service, things like that. Uh, but particular at NSA, uh, we have a, a slight specific definition of we think cloud, what cloud is. Cloud is, cloud is big data. Um, obviously, we probably have a lot of problems that have a big data focus. Uh, so uh, to, to us at NSA, big data is being uh, able to take data and enrich it across other data sets uh, and analyze it in a way that, uh, that goes beyond the limits of what you could do in a more traditional ingest uh, process index search type workflow. Um, uh, so our big data systems are based on uh, Hadoop uh, and Accumulo. Uh, Accumulo is uh, 
uh, was developed at the NSA. It was uh, inspired by Google's big table paper. Uh, and we added uh, some things to do uh, individual cell-based security, uh, iterators, uh, performance enhancements to increase ingest rates into the, uh, the database. And, and two years ago, we actually open sourced that. And it's now a uh, thriving uh, Apache Software Foundation project out there uh, that anybody can go and use. Um, so on, on cloud, uh, the guy from HubSpot yesterday mentioned how uh, when they were trying to look for uh, their private cloud solution, they were looking for that kind of mythical beast, the, the unicorn. Uh, unfortunately, our existing systems at the time were not at all unicorns. They were uh, horses with a cone on their head. Um, so, so our infrastructure as a service cloud uh, in, in the past was manually intensive. Uh, there was lots of stovepipes of excellence. There was lots of different teams whose job was to do DNS or to do IP addressing or to do network configuration or storage or whatever. So all those individual teams actually had a lot of automation and, and stuff that worked well within their little component, but there was no kind of cross-component uh, orchestration to, uh, to do lots of uh, uh, efficient uh, service delivery. So uh, to, give you, to give you an example of what our previous system was before we got into OpenStack, uh, so if somebody has an idea, and they have to go through this process. The process is like fill out a mound of paperwork, wait in line while your, while your request gets processed. Well, uh, well somebody looks at the, the, the request and then goes back to you and says, oh, you forgot to fill out this, this, and this. And then it goes to an approval board. And then this process might iterate uh, for every step of the way. Um, and you might find out, oh, there's some other group that wants to insert their process into the path to actually getting anything done. Um, so obviously, government, it was large. It was a large bureaucratic process. So we were trying to get past that. So weeks or months later, um, uh, somebody trying to go through this process to do something to try to develop a capability or an idea to see, it, see if it even worked uh, would get so frustrated because the process would take weeks or months to happen uh, before they could even try it out. And by that time, you're like, why bother? What, what was I even trying to do? Um, so the, the problem we were trying to solve was, was that it took too much time uh, from idea to capability to actually deploy anything in our environment. And we needed scale, and we needed uh, agility to be able to do things quickly as uh, mission changed and demands came up. So we looked at a lot of things, and uh, our, our solution was we wanted something to lower the barriers to entry uh, that was self-service, on-demand, elastic, with API access, uh, so that we could do things in a much more efficient, agile way. And uh, we investigated a private OpenStack cloud. And I'm going to walk through uh, kind of our story of how we, how we rolled that out. So OpenStack started up, and I, uh, I went to the uh, Diablo Summit in Santa Clara years ago. And I came back all invigorated about uh, everything the community was doing and that Rackspace and NASA had done. And it, the technology seemed really cool. Um, so I came back, and me and another uh, coworker of mine, two mad scientists, uh, we stole a rack because the process to actually get equipment w went through that long process of paperwork and tickets and boards of people. Um, so we, we, we stole a rack in a lab. Um, and our goal was to try out OpenStack, offer flexible hosting, and kind of just get a, get a feel for what OpenStack could do for us to help solve some of our IT problems. Uh, so within, within about two weeks, we actually had a system up, up and running uh, based on Cactus, like Mark said earlier. Um, at the time, uh, it was a little rough around the edges, but uh, we actually got it working. And we had API and CLI access. We had tens of users at the time. We were just talking about a lab here. Um, but it, we, we really started to get an idea of what it could do. Like, uh, users no longer had to go uh, submit a request to the lab management team to, to get something. They could actually do it on their own. Um, so we started to see that this might be able to help us out. Um, but uh, we needed to go beyond that, because this was just a lab environment. People could only really create uh, toy applications or prototypes in there, because they couldn't uh, talk to anything out uh, in the external uh, network or put, it, put their uh, application in front of other users uh, to see uh, if it was beneficial. Uh, so that was uh, the pilot system was our patient zero. So we started to see our first unicorn. But it was kind of. Kind of just a paper unicorn here. Uh, so our, our next idea was to, to go bigger. Obviously, as a, as a techie, you always want to try to go bigger. So we wanted more hardware, more users, uh, more use cases. 
uh, basically just more. So we wanted to get bigger. Uh, so we decided to co-locate our second system with one of our big data systems. Uh, so we started with half a rack, and over time we uh, tripled that in size. Uh, this actually gave users access to mission data, so no longer were they in a lab environment where they were firewalled off from, er from everything. They could actually get access to data uh, and develop things that other people could use, and uh, they could actually see the, the benefit of. Uh, so we started getting uh, use cases such as relational databases, web applications, non-Hadoop processing, uh, that they could now do in a much more flexible way because it was co-located with the, the big data system. Um, and we had OpenStack to be able to give us that elastic on-demand access to things. Um, so the results of that were really great. We had hundreds of users over about a six-month period. Um, we started seeing the benefit of the fail-fast model, where people are actually encouraged of trying out new ideas, and whether or not it might succeed isn't really important. It's whether it's giving people the incentive to try things out. Um, so we were very generous with capacity in the system, because uh, we were still trying to get a feel of how the OpenStack system worked for us. Uh, and uh, we gave people large quotas, and uh, we kind of playfully shamed people who were, uh, who were uh, abusing capacity, just spinning up a bunch of stuff and not doing anything valuable with it. Um, but we really started to see the huge potential for kind of general applicability of uh, solving our problems. So this system had more unicorns, uh, twice as many. That was patient one. So uh, what we really needed to do next was figure out how to make it real, how to, how to put it in production to the, the entire uh, technical workforce at the agency uh, to solve development problems and solve production hosting problems. Um, and so we had to look at some of our uh, organizational challenges to uh, rolling out something that completely changed uh, kind of that SOFIPS of excellence model. Um, and we had to figure out how we're gonna kind of get to production. So we had to look at things like automation. Uh, automating kind of the deployment installation configuration of, uh, of OpenStack. Uh, so we did that with things like Puppet. And we, we got to the point where now we can actually take bare metal racks of servers and install our OpenStack load on it in about 20 minutes and have a functioning OpenStack cluster. Uh, we had to look at how do we secure the system. Uh, we're actually kind of good at that. Uh, so we, we, we secured uh, the operating system of all the uh, the host in our clusters. We looked at how, how do we secure the API, how do we put SSL everywhere, um, and how do, we, how do we secure the guest OSs that are going to be running in our cloud. So we, we did a lot of image instrumentation with kind of baked in security practices, standard hardening uh, based on some of the NIST guidelines and things like that. Um, and and uh, do, 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 do. So uh, we, we hope to, in the future, take some of the stuff that we've learned from uh, securing the OpenStack system and kind of release that back out uh, to the community as kind of secure uh, hardening and configuration guides, similar to how uh, the NSA has done with uh, operating systems like Linux and Solaris and Windows in the past. Uh, so hopefully we'll be able to do that in the future. Go. Uh, we had to figure out how are we going to actually give people accounts? How are you going to track usage in the system? In a, in a public cloud environment, it's kind of easy. You just bill people based on the usage. Uh, you charge their credit cards. So that's how all the public cloud providers do it. But at NSA, um, we didn't have that. So what we, what we ended up doing is uh, we have PKI. And PKI is awesome because uh, it's, we, we have ubiquitous PKI for all our users. Uh, so it, it gives us the ability to really easily add single sign-on uh, authentication, identity tracking, and management uh, within the system and to actually track accountability of how the, how the users are using the system, how to, uh, how to tr tie that back to a particular project or organization that they're working in uh, to kind of track the usage to feed, to tie into showback and metering systems so that the uh, powers that be can uh, determine how to best take advantage of the resources we have at our disposal. Uh, so along with that, we, uh, we figured out how to uh, uh, we, we created a free tier. Since we have PKI and all our users have PKI, uh, it was really uh, easy to, uh, we actually hooked into uh, Keystone and Horizon to do auto account creation when um, a user hit the, hit the Horizon website. And, and we, we created this free tier where users could get a de default quota with ever, without ever having to talk to somebody, uh, which at NSA is good because most people are introverts. Uh, and they, they don't like talking to people if, at all. So, uh, so uh, this free tier really allowed people to uh, start using the system, create a VM or two, and, uh, 
and try, some, try out some idea before they even go um, figure out if it's going to be worthwhile. So that way they spend uh, appropriate time on the things that are going to be valuable. So, so th this free tier really led to an outbreak. Uh, we had lots of unicorns. We had some rainbows. We had some zebras with a unicorn head, spike thing. Uh, so we had everybody just, uh, w without even advertising the system when we finally went live, uh, we had uh, an epidemic. Uh, we, we, we didn't launch it. We didn't market it at all. Uh, people just kind of found the URL for our system. And with PKI and the free tier, uh, it, we had viral growth. We had hundreds of users just uh, within the first few weeks without ever uh, uh, mentioning that we went live. Uh, over time, that grew to thousands of users. Uh, we started seeing uh, people running production workloads on there. Um, and uh, over time, we've, we've had multiple OpenStack systems. We migrated from Diablo up to Folsom. I'm actually really happy to say that we're no longer running Diablo. Because the past three summits I've been at, we've always been still running Diablo. Um, and, and the interesting thing is, this has all been managed by a really small team. In the past, when we have had the, the previous uh, infrastructure as a service system, uh, all, all the various stovepipe teams were, were fairly large. And um, this OpenStack system let us grow to a scale that a very small team of uh, 12 or 15 people uh, could, could manage. Um, which is really great for us. Um, so we, we, we started to see now that we had the ability for developers to get access to resources in a, in a really quick uh, time, we started seeing a change in our development pattern. Uh, we, we had users start kind of crowdsourcing and sharing ideas for uh, application stacks. So we came up with these in a box recipes where somebody could create kind of Django in a box or Tomcat in a box, things like that and then share that with the rest of uh, the users so that you didn't have to reinvent the wheel every time you wanted to uh, de deploy kind of a standard application stack. Uh, it, it changed the system lifecycle process. Uh, in, in, in our previous systems, we had very rigid uh, development environments, test environment, production environment, and an application had to flow through that entire system. And they're all physically separate systems. Um, and now, with the flexibility that we had in our OpenStack environment, um, it allowed each individual project to manage for themselves how they wanted to control their system lifecycle. If they wanted to have separate projects for development, test, production, they could certainly do that. But if they wanted to do more of a DevOps model, this actually put the power in their hands to be able to do that, which we hadn't had in the past. Um, we had a more common, since we had a more common environment, um, it also helped us uh, to uh, be able to share. Um, uh, uh, application configuration stuff so that people didn't um, have to worry about, I built this thing over here, and now I want to run it over here in this other system. Is it going to work the same in both environments? And ultimately, this led to better collab collaboration amongst our developers and ultimately better mission to be able to create better mission systems. Uh, along the way, obviously, this was, this was fairly disruptive. Um, it, it was a complete paradigm shift to the entire existing uh, IT community. Uh, so we broke lots of things along the way. We broke lots of external systems that did, uh, weren't uh, ready for kind of uh, large-scale automated request access. Um, uh, so so we, we've been having to work with those various external service providers of ours to be able to figure out how do we uh, create an API between us and them for those things that uh, aren't controlled within OpenStack. Uh, we had to look at how do we change or eliminate uh, IT process uh, that may or may not be useful when you're now talking about this elastic, agile cloud environment. Uh, and we had to rethink a lot of our problems. So um, the certification and accreditation process for taking an application and making it production, uh, we've had to uh, work very closely with our security folks uh, to figure out how to uh, change that. Uh, so ultimately, this led to changing the game. Uh, using OpenStack gave us better agility, better flexibility, uh, better scalability to be, to be able to create better mission systems. Uh, and ultimately, it was a win-win. Um, so it, it, to the security folks, it was kind of a nightmare for them. But when, when we really kind of talked them down, uh, they were able to see that it provided, uh, it actually lowered the risk, since we had this kind of consolidated central system, that they now had much deeper insight into, rather than these separate stovepipes. Um, so we, we had a, uh, uh, a better uh, working relationship with the security folks to be able to uh, show, prove accountability, prove that the system was secure in various ways, 
through uh, reporting, logging, metrics, uh, and following kind of this trust but verify model that we uh, worked with them for. Um, so it's, it's drastically changed the IT environment at the agency. Uh, so we, we've kind of transformed the NSA, and over the next few months, we're actually going to be working with the larger intelligence community uh, to actually roll out and uh, deliver our open tech system across the entire uh, IC community. And over the, the next few months, hopefully, uh, under ODI, and we'll be uh, pushing out and uh, giving access to our open tech systems to the rest of the IC so that they can leverage the same efficiency that we have uh, over the past uh, year, year and a half. Um, so our next steps is uh, we're going to continue our growth. We're going to continue scaling out and adding more systems. Hopefully, we'll be able to track upstream releases uh, quicker than we did initially. Uh, we've done some open source contributions. Uh, I've contributed a vulnerability fix for Keystone and a, and a few other things. And over time, we expect and hope to uh, contribute more. Um, and uh, contribute more and partner with the community, things like the uh, OpenStack security group and uh, things like that. Uh, thank you. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.